All right, what is up, everybody? This is Alex once again with another episode of the EOT News Flash. This is episode 63, Modern Metal, because I typo this afternoon, and that's what we got. So, anyway, I want to kick off tonight by introducing my co-host. We have directly beneath me, if you're watching this on YouTube, Mr. Busted Sleeves. How's it going, Sean? How's it going? All right. And to my that away on the YouTube show, um, the inanimate Mr. Uh, Mr. Pierce. How's it going, Steven? It's going pretty well. Yeah. I'm finally going to play in a standard event this weekend. It's going to be great. Nice, nice. You're going to run this sweet uh, Marvel Sahili deck that works so well all the time. No, I still need more <laughs> practice on that one. I'm going to play Jund Energy, most likely. Ah, you coward. That sounds like a Pro Tour deck. Talk you were the reason why I. You were the reason why I swapped. You're like, ah, oh, well, you know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you, oh, it's yeah, not my sure. fault if you're not sticking to your guns here, champ. Well, also, oh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, my buddy who I am borrowing the deck from didn't have all the pieces for Sahili, and so it's just easier for us to put together Gen Energy. And anyway, he won the PPTQ with it last weekend in the same meta. So. Oh. That's same. another reason. Well, if it works, guys, it works. The guy's scared of meta, so he's having to adjust. <laughs> Gosh. No, I mean, I can play both decks. Like I said, one's going to be harder to get than the other. Anyway, I don't that's, think you can play both in the tournament. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, 120 cards. Let's see what happens. That's not even that battle. Seems, that seems reasonable, yeah. Battle of Blitzit, bro. Yeah. yeah. Seems fine. All right. Anyway, so... Great show tonight for you guys, talking about the Pro Tour results, all the shenanigans that happened there. We have the return of the PTQ, sort of. And we also kind have, of. kind of, right? And then since a lot of our listeners are based in Texas, at least, um, there are a bunch of modern tournaments. Both the, um, the SCG Open is the first or second weekend in March. Uh, we also have GP San Antonio, which is going to be Team Modern, which is going to be really sweet. And then also, what am I forgetting here, guys? Is that the only one, um, or the only two? Uh, I think there's, there's only two moderns I know right. of. Well, they're, they're, they're major tournaments, and we also did, we just had regionals last weekend, the same weekend as the Pro Tour. So modern has been, you know, played a lot, and people are talking about it. So we're gonna do a little modern metagame breakdown. And I think Steven's got a, a fun little piece for us. But before we begin the night's show proper. I, I went and drafted Aether Revolt this weekend. I won that draft. It was sweet. The Blue Red Improvised deck is a real thing, and it's real good. Um, I, I, went, I bore witness to an event. It was There was also a GPT happening at the same time, and I bore witness to an event. Um, rip. Rip. <laughs> rip. <laughs> <laughs> um, one player is on Green Black Delirium, one of, the, one, of the, one of the best decks in the format right now, and he's playing against his opponent who's on Just Guy Sahili Copycat deck. Um, so this is the setup, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pose this to you, the viewers, and I'm gonna let Sean and, and Stephen kind of debate their answer on this one. But I'm not gonna say what actually happened because I would kind of ruin the spirit of what we're doing here. But basically, what is the play, and can you defend your play essentially? So the green black player has um, in play two swamps and four or five forests, and in his hand he has grasp of darkness. And Demon of Dark Schemes. Um, or no, no, not Demon of Dark Schemes. Uh, Mind Rack Demon, I'm sorry. Um, and nothing on, the, on his side of the board. His opponent has seven or eight lands, all different colors. He can cast literally any spell he draws out of his deck. And he only has Thelidar Govern, or Guardian in play. No cards in hand. And it's the green-black player's turn. So you draw for your turn, and obviously, you know, it's, it's Mind Rack Demon, whatever. So the question is... Um, What's the play? A little more context here is that the Just Guy Sahili player is at 8 life. Um, you've ar already one of the copies of Sahili is gone from the deck thanks to a Pick the Brain, the, the Exile spell. Um, so the question is, as the Green Black player, what do you do? You have two Swamps, four or five Forests, Mind Rack Demon, or Grass of Darkness in your hand. What do you play? I'm going to go to Sean first. What is your play? Uh, so I, so there's obviously the two lines. You either grasp the cat or you play the demon. Oh, you gotta um, pick one, buddy. Yeah, I'm you gotta discussing. Pick one. Oh, I didn't say do both. <laughs> I'm outlining the options. Oh, okay, sure, um, sure. So in the grasp, you have the choice to do it on their turn, your turn. Right. If you elect to grasp, um, how, do you know how much la how many lands did you say two, the uh, two swamps the, and about four or five forests? No, the Sahili player has. Oh, the same, same amount of lands, and he has all the colors he needs. 
Swamp, two swamps and about four or five fours. Okay, so... Six or seven lands, I, I couldn't remember the exact count. All right, so that's pretty important because um, what you have to take into account is whether or not if they rip Glimmer, can they Glimmer into Sahili? Okay, sure. Um, so, like, what's the odds of them having redraws to the combo? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm personally of the opinion that if they are hellbent, meaning no cards in hand, um, and they just have cat in play, then it's going to be kind of important to... Um, <laughs> Get some pressure on the board. Like if you if you just keep passing and playing into their their control game, you're probably not winning that game in general. Sure. Um, so my my gut would say to play play the the demon. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna play the grasp, you have to do it on your turn because you don't want them to rip a counter spell on their turn and be able to interact with it. Sure. Uh, but I would probably put the uh, put the demon into play. Okay. Sure. Um, because because then you can still grasp the next turn if they do have a counter then you have like ways to interact with it mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like grasping is definitely the better, better play in, I mean no, grasping, playing the demon would be the better play in my opinion okay. that's why would I would I want to be aggressive as yeah, often as he's possible dead, he's dead in two turns effectively okay so, yeah sure okay so Steven, what is your play uh, it really kind of depends on what type of green black deck you're playing um, but I think uh, in this situation I would just go ahead and uh, kill the cat. Because okay. if uh, uh, kill the cat your turn before they have a chance to draw anything, sure. uh, like Sean was saying, uh, and the main reason I would do that is because even if uh, they like, so you have two turns, so they effectively ha would have two draws at hitting like action like Sahili plus counter, right? Uh, and even if they hit like a counter, like you know it has to be uh, in this case, it can be any of their counters, I guess, ex except for Revolutionary Rebuff, if they're running that. Mm -hmm. So, if you uh, play Demon now, you know, you could just die. But if you kill it, and they do draw a counter spell, then they have to counter your Demon, and then you're both at parity, and they don't have either side of the combo. Uh, like, their worst case is probably drawing in a Torrential Gear Hulk. Mm -hmm. And like depending on uh, what type of green black deck you're on, I th I think you're better positioned uh, if for some reason you know your demon does die. But I mean that in that situation, like they have to rip counter to stop your demon. So like sure, sure. it is one turn, but you're not gonna just randomly die to the combo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with both of those lines. You know, I I saw what happened. I thought it was hilarious what happened. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree. You know, they're two very correct lines there and obviously without knowing all the information possible you know knowing what's on top of the library things like that it's I, I think they're both completely reasonable plays either you get aggressive or you play the defensive long game and try to grind them out value wise so yeah well it's not exactly a defensive long game I mean it's just like one you're taking one turn off effectively right right yeah definitely yeah but yeah I um, yeah I mean it's it, it, yeah it can, it can kind of go either way but it's just it's one of those situations where you, you, I mean, like, are you going to win the long game against them if you play this defensive plan where you kill the cat and then try to cast the Minerak Demon next turn? Yeah. I could, I could definitely see both sides of it, but uh, it also kind of depends on what's been played before. Like, have yeah. you interacted with previous portions of the combo, so the probability of them drawing them less? Yeah. Have you interacted with no pieces, so the probability of drawing them is higher? Yeah. So it really kind of depends on what you've done before. Well, you know, given the yeah. situation, there have been a lot, already a lot of creatures that already died. Um, one of the copies of Sahili was gone mm -hmm. out of the deck completely from uh, Pick the Brain or whatever it's called. Um, so, like, so yeah, you're definitely right. There are definitely a lot of factors that go into that. But obviously, two very correct lines, I think. So it just kind of goes to show that there is never, I think, one correct line in any given situation. And I think, and I, and more than anything, I, or, I, that's what I want to illustrate with this is like you. I don't think that there is ever a absolutely 100 correct um, line of play in any given situation unless it's like well i mean like, like you're, you're going for the pass. play that has the highest ev so like right it, if you want the highest risk highest reward i think you go with sean's play but if you want like the more consistent one i think you uh would kill it so yeah, like it also is that more consistent on though like slow like not Taking, well, not taking advantage of the fact that they aren't doing anything like is is, is it more consistent to sit back and play to their long game yeah. Uh, I mean, it, again, it's the one turn, and they have to rip like a counter spell, like disallow or something. Um, I guess they could also, if you're at uh, what? No, even if you're at six lands, rebuff doesn't hit your demon. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> like, I think more often than not, like, Green Black would come on top from that situation, just killing the cat. Like, because they have to hit they have to hit that counter because like if you play demon they hit counter then they you know hit it they'll still have the mana they need I, I, yeah i get that's rough yeah it's it's like and, and you guys are both i think absolutely right like but this is just a great example of just there's not always one right line and i think that's the, i think that what if you want to get better as a magic player you have to be able to identify all lines possible and be able to make those decisions very very quickly in a lot of cases so yeah good stuff guys so who wants to talk about the Pro Tour? Show of hands, Sean? No? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Always always oh, down to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it was entertaining. It, it Except was... for Martyr Vehicles featuring <laughs> Green Black all day one. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody watched the Pro Tour coverage, it was over the weekend, over in, in Dublin. Um, this was the debut of the, the six-man teams. So, Sean, you kind of figured that that was kind of a, a driving force for the way that the format kind of shook out. Um, but just to kind of give you guys some rough numbers here, so I um, I broke down one of the articles. I was looking at one of the articles that was posted on MTG Goldfish that broke down a lot of the numbers. So, ninety-two players showed up with Mardu vehicles. Seventy-five made day two. Um, Seventy-five players on Just Guy Sahili, the copy hat deck showed up. Twenty-six day two playing that. I couldn't find the numbers on um, the green black decks, but it's probably pretty close to that onto the higher side of things um, in terms of Mardu vehicles. Um, day two players, thirty-seven percent of them were not playing either Jeskai, green black, or Mardu. Like these are these are huge numbers here. Um, the top eight had twenty-eight copies of Heart of Kieran. 31 copies of Scrap Heat Scrounger. Like these are, this is almost pushing Jason Stoneforge numbers at GP Dallas before they got banned. Like in just terms of how many copies were in each deck. Like this is a crazy, crazy number. So the top eight consisted of, in first place, Lucas Esper Berthold. So, you know, Esper always comes out on top, which is great. Play Mardu Vehicles. In second place, Marcio Carvalho, play Mardu Vehicles. In third place, Eduardo Sajnik, I want to say, uh, also playing Mardu Vehicles. Fifth place, Yu Chen Lu, playing Mardu Vehicles. Sixth place, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa, playing Mardu Vehicles. Seventh place, Jan Sander, playing Golgari Agro. And in eighth place, Martin Yuza, playing Jund Energy. So, what happened here, guys? <laughs> Sean, what do you think about this? Uh, it didn't go the way I fully expected. Um, I had actually played cars the, the either I think the weekend before, mm -hmm. uh, Marty vehicles, and the deck's really good, and it has a really strong match versus Sahili. Um, I didn't think the green black decks were 100% uh, tuned like the SCG. We saw we saw these play green black decks and the Sahili yeah. decks, um, and normally the the decks you see at the SCG don't don't pan out in the Pro Tour as effectively because these pros are a little bit better at tweaking and building these decks. Mm -hmm. Um, but the SCG was actually pretty close as far as like the list they were running. Um, the green black deck is a little bit more consistent than I had originally expected uh, against a wider range of the field. And the Mardu cars is just so good against the Sahili decks and, and a lot of the, like these control decks are struggling because they want to run Radiant Flames and more importantly, they want to run Fumigate for these, these green black decks, but yeah. then they just get crushed by these vehicles that aren't creatures on sorcery speed. Yeah. Um, and then they want to run instant speed interaction for the vehicles. And those don't, the instant speed interactions don't always super effectively hit the green black deck. Yeah. So Sahili, I think, while the deck is, seems sweet, it just, its answers are too evenly spread because of this vehicle situation. Mm -hmm. So it kind of got fried up, even though it was a very large part of the field. Um, and Cars is just a really good deck. So is green black. But yeah. um, I think it was weird that, I, I, well, weird and interesting that uh, there was just really three decks. It's just three decks. Yeah, if we take a look into the the best decks, you know, obviously it's it's there's more than just um, standard play at the Pro Tour. You had the, the limited portion of it as well, which kind of made up some of the point values as well. But if you look at the 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 best decks, and this is decks that got between twenty two and thirty points in the standard portion, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 
17 of the top 30 decks were Mardu vehicle variants of some kind, followed closely by some of the green-black decks, the red-black aggro, and there's only a single Jeskai copied cat deck that actually broke into this 22 point and above range. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure it out here, because Mardu vehicles was a known quantity, even at the SCG Open. It, it popped up a couple times. It's been seen online. So what the heck happened here? Um, Steven, what, what do you think happened here? Like, this is... This is weird, I have to admit. This is weird. Well, I think for the most part, like a deck like Mardu Vehicles or one of those isn't going to really get tuned until the Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the teams that are, you know, testing for the SCGs, they'll have, you know, uh, a high sense of motivation to, you know, make really good decks and, you know, set themselves up well for that tournament. But the guys for the Pro Tour, like, that is what they do for a week, a week and a half. So, yeah. you know, they probably, you know, especially, what, like, Channel Fireball had three teams, I believe. It's like they could uh, easily yeah. have just, like, bounced all of their ideas between each other and be like, mm -hmm. hey, this is our current version of this. Like, we think it's really well positioned because of this. And then between them all, you know, they just go, all right, what deck do we expect to be there? Like, Saheeli, Green Black vehicles like which one are we wanting to beat all right let's go with this deck because yeah. really like the three deck situation just comes down to the rock paper scissors uh of like you know aggro mid-range and uh control yeah, you know, well, I, it, yeah it, I agree but and, this uh, is a little bit different situation yeah the Sahili decks like people just refuse to lose to that like they, they're gonna come in they're gonna say <laughs> okay yeah like you don't, I don't come into any match saying, "What are my six to eight main deck answers for green black? What are my main deck answers for improvise and Tezzeret? Like the only <laughs> deck in the format where I'm like, I need six to eight answers or more to a deck is it's Sahili because I refuse to lose to a combo because Wizards was stupid to print it. Yeah. Um. So like everybody went in Just saying, "We're gonna make sure we have answers." Sean. Uh, I mean, I, the deck's fun. The deck's sweet. Uh, but like that's that's that kind of like. Because like it take that combo combo as much as I enjoy combo decks, it takes a lot of play skill out. Like yes, you have to set up positions, mm -hmm. but this like oops I win situation, um, especially pros and high level players refuse to lose to those decks. They will yeah. they'll lose to anything else, but they refuse to lose to that because they they think in a situation and I think anything any competitive player. This is my mindset anytime I go to a tournament. There are players I think that are really great in DFW and in Texas, um, and that I don't think I'm better than. Uh, but I don't think I'm worse than anybody. If I'm ever in a situation where I'm going to go into a tournament, and I've, I've, there's lists of people who will tell me I'm wrong, that there are so many people better than me, and I fully understand that, and I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else, but my mentality is I'm not going to go pay an entry fee for a tournament if I don't think I can close the door and win the thing. Yeah. So yeah. if I have that mentality, that means I think that any given match in any situation, I can make the correct decisions to get myself to a W. Mm -hmm. um, however, this Oops, I Win deck existing actually make actually like interacts with that that mindset and I refuse to give up that mindset so I'm gonna go into every tournament and say I'm gonna make sure that the only deck that could just accidentally beat me regardless of play skill and regardless of decision making can't beat me I refuse to lose to that and I'll worry about the rest of the field yeah, um, that's totally and fair. the deck that does that best is Mardu cars because uh, they have a decent match against green black it's kind of like 50 50 play draw depending on what everybody has mm -hmm. uh, but it has a really good match versus uh, versus Sahili uh, whereas green black has a decent match against Sahili and it's got a lot of aggression but they get more blown up by the, the traditional control deck of the Fumigate and Torrential Gear Hulk. Right. So I want the deck that gets less blown up by that uh, by their backup plan because I'm planning on shutting down their main plan. Yeah, no, no, that, that makes complete sense actually. I completely agree with you in that regard. Um, I had a point to make here. I completely forgot what it Sorry. was. <laughs> no, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, I was looking at the metallic rebukes in the sideboards of these Mardu vehicle decks and I'm like, wait a second, that's a blue card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of some of them splash blue. I tried it. I, I'm not not the biggest fan of the blue in the deck. I mean, they're just splashing off Aether Hobbit and uh, and the Spire of Industry. Like that's genius. Yeah. Like when yeah, and a couple of them will run Cultivator's Caravan. The problem is like consistently having it. I tried the blue deck that's, at the PPTQ, true, yeah. and consistently having the blue is real rough. Uh, the list that uh, that a buddy of mine was playing was actually really close to this Pro Tour list that that was uh, like second place. Yeah. Um, so it, the deck, the deck's just really strong. Hard of Kieran, um, whenever it got spoiled, I was like, oh, this card's great, this card's insane. And then as the spoils continue, I was like, it's legendary, yeah. and it's a cool three. <laughs> I'm only gaining one, so I'm not so sold on it. And then now it's like, you gotta run four. 
You gotta yeah. run four. This card's great. You just I, smash your four. They kill it. You play another one. You smash your four, and it's ah. Oh. Yeah, I I think that was the difference between the decks that we saw at the SEG opens. They weren't playing Heart of Karen. Like they just thought, oh, we just don't need to play it. We don't have Smuggler's Copter, and this isn't good enough to replace it. When clearly it absolutely is good enough to replace it because you have things like Gideon that just don't care about their loyalty. Just keep picking, taking them off. Yeah, the, the SCG decks, they, they ran like two Gideons, um, yeah. which Gideon is like one of the best decks in the format. It was before and now even more so with the bands happening. Mm -hmm. So the Pro yeah. Tour is running three or four of them in the list, and they're running two or three hearts. And so they were having problems finishing the game. Like a lot of the cars decks in original testing were like, man, we got them to five. We couldn't finish the game. Well, this Heart of Kieran would have finished it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a matter of like, I think the SCG was, was along the same path. They were a little afraid. If Copter was still around, Heart of Kieran wouldn't be a thing. Yeah, but in the current definitely. situation, like uh, Heart I don't, of Kieran, I don't agree with that. I think uh, I think Heart of Kieran would have taken over some of the slots. It would it would have been in the decks, but it would not be a four of. It would be like oh, yeah. it would be one or two. Yeah, um, I'll probably see I, both I, Heart and and Copper in the same deck, but not see Aethersphere Harvester. I think that's what yeah, the outlier would be. I think it would be four. Yes. It'd be four copters and like two hearts. The the harvesters would go away for two hearts, and you'd run four copters because yeah. the ability to fix your draws. Mardu does occasionally flood out and get really awkward draws because it doesn't have great ways to fix its lands. Um, and so the ability to filter out it's just worth more than the plus one plus one. Yeah, um, I, I agree with and, that completely. And the net positive in the power, like Hardy Kieran's great, but I, you also have legendary. So there's sometimes where you have hands. You like what draw is in the Mardu vehicles list other than like uh, what Inventor's Apprentice and Thraven Inspector can't crew a heart. Uh, uh, that's, that's true. Yeah, you can't crew heart with Toolcrafter before you get to combat. Before you get to combat. Oh so yeah, uh, I can yeah, start yeah. an opponent who has any idea what they're doing. That's just like yeah, well, yeah, before you would true. combat kill this thing. Yeah. Uh, and then you're also, it's not a matter of whether or not you can crew it, it's what am I gaining? Smuggler's Copter, I gain two power. Hard to and I gain one. So, like, That's you're true, yeah. you're still but gaining at the same less, time, you also have... Okay. I mean, I still think, like, Hard of Kieran is awesome in the fact that it can play the offense and defense at the same time. If well, it I'm not to. saying it's not. It would be, like, two or three, but the legendary is a huge smash on that card. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's In testing, like, there's occasionally seven-card hands where you're like... You have a couple lands, and you have, like, three hearts. So you've mulliganed. Yeah. Um, and so, like, if I could have two in the deck, and I have a Smuggler's Copter who lets me loot to my Heart of Kieran, yeah. and so I don't need to run four Heart of Kieran's, that would be sweet, because no longer am I having these awkward, like, like the three Gideon hands that you occasionally see. Like, you don't want that situation. So the Smuggler's Copter just would complement the Heart of Kieran so well. And you still have the Aether Sphere chain where you go, like, Thraven Inspector crew Smuggler's Copter, which crews Hardy Kieran, and then I attack for four. Yeah. Um, so like I, the, the card is yeah, the Hardy Kieran is absolutely insane. I've I've I started in love, I fell out of love, and I've like been fully swayed back on. <laughs> I just I just think if you could not run four and you could loot your way to it with a Smuggler's Copter, that would really be nuts. Yeah, yeah. There, there. Uh, we're not going to talk about it tonight because it's it's a really in depth article. There was an article posted on Star City Games this morning. Um, I forget who wrote it. Pardon me looking at it really quickly. Uh, it was... Shoot, where'd it go? Uh, Jeff Cunningham. I don't know where this guy comes from, um, but he talks about... His article is The the Dangers of Banning Standard Magic Cards and makes a really good case for... Uh, Smuggler's Copter shouldn't have been banned. It's a really, really good, well-thought-out article um, that I think we could probably visit probably next week, but we want to check out the Pro Tour, obviously, before we get to that point. So it's, it's a good read, though. Um, if you haven't read it already, I would go check it out for sure. Um, so yeah, the, the point I was going to make was that we, something that you briefly mentioned, Sean, was the fact that Wizards came out and they released their State of the Union article, whatever they want to call it, um, the M files, and they talked about the fact that they missed the Sahili um, Felidar combo. I just completely overlooked it and didn't think it was going to be a problem, and they still printed it when they found it. So they didn't know it existed. They right. They, they they had talked about some other like other combos that could happen like multiple Feldar guardians and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but it was they they like completely missed the actual infinite combo of yeah. oh, like they have these they have like a weird number of combos in standard right now a format that never gets a combo has like five yeah like yeah. some of them <laughs> some of them are awful I mean we still have Panharmonicon Deep Fiend Displacer we still have you uh, mean Drowner. Or Drowner. Drowner yeah, and we yeah. still have uh, we still have uh, Displacer, Brood Monitor, like Zooport Cutthroat. We still have like uh, <laughs> Crackdown Consulate, Wandering Fumeral. We have Sahili, we have Cat, we have um, it's not a, it, it's not an infinite loop, but you have the paradoxical, the zero drops and the Age of Flux Reservoirs and yeah. like 
You still have, there's like they, they just like shoved a lot. Of, I know there's like one or two others I've du- seen. Double Guardian plus Panharmonicon yeah. equals have, Infinite Lands. You have Double oh, Guardian I mean, plus anything. Double Guardian plus anything. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Double Guardian like, Pious Evangel is yeah. Infinite. I've got yeah, yeah. so many like art, uh, so many like combos where people are like, you just get two Guardians and these other two cards, <laughs> and then you just do this combo, and I'm like. But it's Dude. possible with Eldritch it's, Evolution. Like, yeah, all and these, you have to oh, stand God. on your head, and it has to be, you know, a full moon, and Mars has to be in retrograde. It's like, this is Magical yeah. Christmas Land times two. It's not going to happen. Eldar Guardian is and a And then very somehow they're going to gain Denim Walk. <laughs> <laughs> the Veldar Guardian is a dangerous card, but like, if you yeah. want to play a combo, play a two card combo. Yeah, like, not a, a four or five card combo. combo. Like, there's also like infinite mana. Like, there's a lot of like uh, infinite mana, infinite energy, infinite plus and plus uh, counters. But using the modules from Kaladesh, it's it's kind of yeah. dumb. Uh, but uh, uh, Frank Karsten on Channel Fireball posted a like what if matchup. And you're playing against uh, you're playing against double authority of the consoles and like one Aether Flux Reservoir, Oof. and you had like this board state of like one land Cryptolithites some dudes and then that one drop Green Lady that like makes servos, uh-huh. and you have the artifact that untaps all your non land permanents when you cast a spell, um, and so like you run Elephant in hand, and so you basically like you could make oh, infinite number of constructs. Yeah. But you have to like stop the combo before they get fifty, so they don't fifty you. Right. And so it's like, it's like, it was a what if of how long do you go off, and like, in what way do you go off to get enough dudes with haste? Because you had a guy who gives haste at the same time yeah. to kill your opponent without dying to eight to five. It was it was absurd. Yeah. I was like, Frank, what, Frank what are we doing? Does really good content when it comes to numbers. Like he he writes a bunch of articles around to like yeah. these perfect decks. Like I think it's the twenty mountain forty lightning bolt deck is theoretically. A perfect deck uh, but he, he writes some really fun articles if you like math and you know dealing with probability and magic which a lot of us do to a certain degree he he is your man like for that kind of content he's far smarter than i am and i'm willing to admit that um, don't, don't the i think one of my favorite articles from him was back whenever i was starting to do the gp grind and like whenever he shows you the calculation of just how important the two buys are at grand prix oh, like yeah. it increases your like ev by like a good eight nine percent yeah which is sweet huge, yeah. yeah well since you mentioned gps i mean okay that's about all we got other things at the Pro Tour. This is important, people. Listen up. This is your public service announcement from the EOT Newsflash. <laughs> and this is about going to combat. So, there was an incident at the Pro Tour where a player, and correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, I might be paraphrasing, goes to his attack step and attempts to crew, I believe it was a Heart of Kirin, and a judge is called immediately. Like, like the game is stopped. And basically... <laughs> His, well, it was a communication error. There's a few error. more pieces. Error, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and there's a lot of pieces But, but the, that's kind of important. Yeah. Um, so he said, he said like, move to combat. And he had he had multiple things that had combat triggers. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to he wanted to crew his Heart of Kirin uh, at the beginning of combat before Declare Attacker step. Because if you crew it at Declare Attackers, it can't attack. It has to be a creature before that step. Right. He also had well, a well faster... you can't crew it in Declare Attackers. Right. Uh, well, you can after you've passed priority. Well, yeah, after you yeah, pass priority. Back. Okay, okay. That's why you. That's why you have to have a crew before the step. Yes. Um, yes. And then he also had a weld fast engineer, which is at the beginning of mm-hmm. of combat. Uh, your on mm-hmm. your turn, target artifact creature gets plus two plus zero. Um, and so he had like multiple things he was going on. His his goal was to weld fast engineer, crew heart of Kieran, and make that thing a six four. Was my understanding of his goal. Like he yeah. could have also pumped a uh, scrap heap scrounger. So there's a couple different lines. But he had two things he was trying to accomplish before he moved to the attacker step so he could swing with all of his creatures. Mm-hmm. I'll let you continue. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that's basically what happened. And because the, the way he announced what he was doing, it was announced such that he could not attack with the Heart of Kieran, if that was my understanding correctly. And so what this all boils down to is that he basically shortcut his way into the declare attack step without saying... I would like to move to the beginning of combat, which is typically where things like that would happen. So you move to the beginning of combat, and you have Wildfast at Engineer do its thing. And at that point, you would also create your Heart of Kirin. Priority is then passed before de- attackers are declared. And so because of communication errors, this is all shortcut, and 
there was some really awkward rules lawyering that forced him into a position where he almost he, he actually won that game if I'm not mistaken, but was forced into a really awkward position just because of there was a communication error in terms of what he was trying to do. So your PSA is make sure you know how combat works and know how the steps of the magic turn work. Yeah, it's pretty simple, right, guys? He, you just uh, want to be very exactly. <laughs> want to be very clear. It's <laughs> not very simple, is it? No. It's it's kind of it's, it's kind of dumb. I, it frustrated me a lot um, because it's in the rule book, but they they pride themselves on being a, a multi-country game, a multi-ethnic game. Yes. So we have a huge amount of languages. People collect cards because of different languages. Um, so having a shortcut that is hard to work around if you don't speak English as a native language and you're still trying to communicate with your opponent properly um, really is a pain. Like yeah. So he he said he said. Um, his phrase was like combat or move to combat. Mm -hmm. um, and that shortcut says we are now at the declare attacker step. You're passing any priority leading up to that um, and, is what the shortcut technically is. Yeah. And the reason that shortcut came about is because wizards felt like uh, people were baiting their opponents into like acting before the beginning of combat step. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they felt that whenever you say combat or begin combat, that means you're going straight to declare attacker. So that there's no uh, ambiguity between you and your opponent, and you can't like abuse that little. Oh well, this was actually my main phase, so now I'm going to play this haste creature and do something, or like do something else. You yeah. know. So yeah. That's why that rule came about, and you know, I think it's maybe time that you know it gets reevaluated, but. But I, I, I don't know. I yeah, mean, the, the problem it's kind of interesting. You, you have I, you have these vehicles that require you to really know where where the steps actually go. So I, th mm -hmm. I, th I think this set is one of the few that actually abuses that. Um, or there there is the level of well, could abuse could possible, utilize the beginning yeah, yeah. of combat. Yeah. Ex exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it, I, mean, I mean, at the same. Oh, sorry. No, Sean, go ahead. Uh, I mean, like I I've had a discussion with somebody I was testing with a while back um, where. Um, we were we were testing and they were moving to combat and they were doing some kind of like Ulamog effect. And I was going to try to Coco into a Reflector Mage, and so they're like uh, they said like move to combat and then they were going to attack with Ulamog. And I was like, well, before you go to the Declare Attacker steps, I have effects. And it like became a messy situation where they're like, well, so you're doing this at the end of my main phase, and this is all in testing. I'm like, no, like I can do this between your main phase and before your Declare Attacker step. There's yeah. a window for me to interact, and so like he. It became real messy in that situation because people are so used to it. They ha they normally don't have a whole lot of interactions for that little phase, mm -hmm. that little window uh, where it, where it's super influential. But it's still an important part of the phase, and it's you just have to be super clear. They they came out and they clarified that like if you say that you're moving to combat, but all in one breath before you pass any chance for your opponent saying that you're like I'm going to combat, I have this effect, and you say it all in constant sentence, it's it's clear. Or um, you can say I'm beginning the combat phase. Not I'm like you're, you're making it clear that I'm not shortcutting anything. Yeah. Um, and then you start explaining what you're because you have to take actions first. So. But I don't you know, just, Sean. What does a phase have to do with anything? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but like, it, you, it's just, it's a matter of like you as a player have to keep it clear because like in an attempt to prevent shadiness, it opened the door for shadiness, and it's yeah. just like that's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, which is like against what the rule was yeah, wanting to do. Yeah, it was against the intention of the rule. The intention of the rule was like, we we want games decided based on skill, even though we're going to print combos. We wanted the game decided based <laughs> oh, on skill. Oh, boo-hoo. Um, and instead of doing that, like, we, in an attempt to make sure that happened, we actually opened the door for yet another way for the skill not to be involved. Like, knowing the rule book inside and out and finding ways to, like, nick your opponents – that's not skill. And there's yeah. a lot of players I know who will do it. If I was in the opponent's seat in that situation, and I've had arguments with my friends, and they think I'm stupid, if I was in my opponent's seat in that situation, the guy communicated clear enough for me that I would not have tried to rules ninja that guy. Even at a pro tour, I don't care. Yeah. That's not how I – I don't play this game for money. Like I want to get to the pro tour, but I want to get to the pro tour on my terms, mm -hmm. which is I earned my way there, not like I got somebody who was tr definitely trying to clearly communicate it. Um, and so I – that's not something I would do. Um, I know a lot of people who would, and you know that's fine. That's your prerogative. I think you're sleazy, but that's your prerogative. No, I agree. Uh, but I, I, that's not the, that's not like, that's not the heart of the game. And I play the game for the game, not because like I'm gonna make a billion dollars. Like I want to go to the pro tour because I'm proud of the way I got there, not because at the end of the day they go, you tricked that guy out of a combat step. Like, that's not what I want. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's that's. They're, they're, that's not the spirit of the game, I don't think. Even at the highest levels of, of competition, I would say that 
a majority of players would not take that route. I would hope at least. Um, I, 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 that's a great area that I don't want to get into, unfortunately. So. Yeah, I'm cynical. I think most pros get to where they are, and they're classified pros because a lot of them take that angle. That's um, yeah. They know. I can. They know that. more about the rule book than the game itself, and in many cases. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was the pro tour. Um, the last time that we saw any kind of result like this, that was this like focus into just three decks was I, we were looking at it earlier, and that was PT Theros almost four or five years ago. Up until now, every Pro Tour has a, has a relatively diverse set of decks in the metagame in the top eight. So this is weird. We'll yeah, it's happens. listed. We'll see what it happens looks like five here. big decks, but it's really three. Yeah, it is, <laughs> this is a, a three-deck format, and that's it's, what it is. But, but it's like a three-deck format with whatever, the, like whatever flavor of ice cream you want to add on top of it. So yeah, like, no, the format's still sweet because yeah, the there's a lot of like great, yeah. tier twos that are that are have good matchups. Yeah. There's like these emerge decks and these red black zombie decks that are and these red black aggro decks that have like decent matchups. It just there is like there's always a top three. There's yeah. almost always yeah. a top something three. has to be the best. Yeah. Format's be unhealthy when there's top two. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, and yeah. having top three, that's fine. It's even better. It's more than two. So yeah. things are diverse. So. Moving on to the return of the PTQ, uh, Sean. That, Slash the everyone in the evening is going to miss their flight. Yeah, that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> so obviously the PTQs have gone away, um, been replaced by the PPTQs, um, and so Wizards released an article this morning that kind of got a lot of people, lot of people happy, and there's some stuff coming back. And some stuff going away. And Sean, this is something that I know that you're particularly interested because you know you have aspects of making the pro tour. Um, so kind of tell us what's going on with the return of nationals. I have real aspirations, Stephen. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, sure. How many did you go to last year? Stephen wants to go to the pro tour too. I, I'm sorry, uh, dude. It's not about the number; it's about the quality, my friend. Um, yeah, I know, and I day two all but one of those. So, oh, you're you're so good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Over there, that means a lot. I did it to 50% because I played in two. And, <laughs> I, and I played in one of them was modern at the most broken form of modern. Yay. Um, all right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> no, so, all right, so there's, they, they announced a few changes. Uh, Helena Bergeau, is that how you say that? Bergeau? Bergeau. All right. Um, so she wrote an article, uh, Lady with the Hardest Job in Wizards, which oh is trying to, <laughs> trying to keep all these trolls and basement dwellers from just like burning the building down all the time. Like I do not envy her job. There's times I rant about her and I, fr and she frustrates me, but that's because she gets put in the worst positions. So, yeah. but she had a good news today. So every once in a while they throw her a bone. Um, <laughs> the, the world magic cup qualifier is no more. Uh, they're getting rid of that and they're bringing back the nationals tournament, which is uh, oh. one time where you play a tournament and if you win, you get to be on your national team and it's this Olympics of magic kind of thing yeah. where you have a team of three, you play against teams of three from other countries and we see what the top country in the world is because there's not enough hostility between countries currently. So <laughs> um, That's the way not I, the point. I got to slide Sorry, in. Sorry, have your puns. Anyway. I'm going to slide in my, my bitterness. Okay. Uh, okay. So you... The the top uh, the highest pro appointed player of your country of your nationality your country is your team captain is automatically on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so in countries like America where we have a very high number of pros, that's going to be a dogfight. Yeah. Good luck. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, right the, the other two slots are to the, the the top two players in the nationals tournament, and then they go and they play a, a three headed giant tournament, and it's going to be standard. Uh, the last time I think was modern and. Yeah. They, they're pushing standard more. We're going to talk a little bit about modern later, but they need to see more consistency. I think, I'm hoping they're not getting rid of modern entirely. I think it's that it's been too broken too much recently, so they're moving to a format that we know we can control because there's never a combo in it. If the uh, oh, yes. modern players need a support group, you can meet with the legacy and vintage <laughs> players every you know, like Sunday at your local game yeah. store. Talk about some accepting formats. It just costs you $1,000 to get in. Um, Proxies are okay. Yeah. It's more about sports, playing yeah. the format, not uh, exactly. not owning everything. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so so they brought back nationals, and that's cool. It's just another fun opportunity. I mean, yeah, we lose the WMCQ, but it's a cool opportunity. Just just I'm all for like I said with this team thing from the Pro Tour. 
I'm all for just keep throwing things against the wall to see what players enjoy. Uh, a lot of players enjoy nationals. I wasn't ever a huge fan of it, but I, I enjoyed it existing. Um, and so they're they're trying something else out. So that's cool. Um, yeah. All in on that. The bigger news from the turn from the article was uh, the return of PTQs in a form, a shell of a PTQ. <laughs> um, and a so hollow shell. Yeah, um, it's at least something. We, it's better than what we previously had in this slot. So we have the PVTQ system. You have to win a tournament of 15 to 40 to 60 players to be on the size of the PVTQ. Then if you ran hot and won that tournament, congratulations, you get to try to run hot and go top four, top eight regionals, depending on your attendance, uh, which is one time, four times a year at one of 13 locations. So for a lot of people in different states, they must travel yep. uh, for this tournament. And you, if you top four, if it's small enough, or top eight if it's big enough, you now have your ticket and your invite to the Pro Tour, yep. meaning that four people, four times a year in most cases, get tickets to the Pro Tour. So that's unfortunate. Don't forget those uh, RPTQ promos. That's something. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the first <laughs> no, time. This it's, is not Progenitus. Yeah, uh, they printed Progenitus to make us feel better about Emrakul. Like, right. <laughs> this is the first time it was a pretty big whiff on the Pro Tour thing. I think yeah. they planned it whenever Nahiri was doing real well, and then Nahiri's kind of disappeared. <laughs> uh, so, Whoops. but... Um, they should just no. get really snarky and uh, do a Splinter Twin as the promo. Oh, I would love that. Because then everybody would start buying them up thinking it's getting reprinted. And it's not getting reprinted. <laughs> kind of like Stoneforge Mystic is a GP promo. Come on, put yeah. it in modern. Yeah. Pretty much for this. Because like, we want to help Legacy. No, you don't. Um, so the old PTQ system, you win a PTQ and you're off to the Pro Tour. You have your plane ticket. You get the envelope there. Um, or you get the information for how to, how to contact them to get your flight information done. Um, and that system, unfortunately, has gone by the wayside because attendance was so high, it was cost prohibitive, and they wanted players in the stores, so the PPTQs put players in the stores. Um, one of the big arguments is they said, we didn't want people renting out convention centers for PTQs, we want them going into the stores. Mm -hmm. Well, so now they're going to they're gonna tack a new vor version of PTQs onto the events that are designed to be at convention centers, uh, because that was their big complaint. Um, so now, on Sunday, you at a GP, if you don't day two the GP, uh, they currently, I believe, have caps of 225 players, yep. and it's um, you get a PTQ opportunity where the winner of the PTQ on Sunday at a GP gets a plane ticket to the next Pro Tour that that GP would feed into if you top eight in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's another opportunity that they're giving. So now the GP has top eight your GP or win this PTQ on Sunday if you didn't day two, and now so they have two options to get to the Pro Tour. I'm all for more options to get to the Pro Tour. Yeah. Um, I really wish those PTQs would match the format of the GP <laughs> that you're going to, though, because you already are going to have the deck for the GP, and if no. you don't make it, okay. it's like, okay, so well, let's salty. adjust. He's playing in GP Milwaukee, which is modern. The, PP, uh, the PTQ. Vancouver. Vancouver, I'm sorry. And the, the format is modern. The PTQ is standard. The PTQ yeah. has to be standard or sealed, yeah. and sealed is trash. Because yeah. you're playing, because the Pro Tour you're going to go to is only standard. Yeah, it's only going to so be standard. So I don't want a bunch of PTQ winners being guys who have mastered their modern deck and never touched standard, because I may get some garbage coverage at that Pro Tour when we have 20 dudes just bumbling around with standard decks. That, so what you're that saying is you don't want to see me at the Pro Tour standard. then. Bingo. <laughs> um, like, I, I think it's... Let them know how you I'll feel. take it. Hey, it's the same reason... I also really hate sealed as a PPTQ, RPTQ, uh, PTQ format oh God, uh, yes. because <laughs> sealed is very different than draft. So it does not really actually mirror what's experienced at the Pro Tour. Yeah. Um, and sealed is just a crapshoot. Yeah. So well, you but, have to top eight to, in order to draft the PPTQ, i.e. open something that's on Elspeth's on champion level. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, so they're, they're thankfully bringing back the one shot because a lot of the complaint was... We want to have more opportunities to qualify the Pro Tour without having to do this run hot, run hot. Especially uh, one of the issues I run into with the PPTQs is I win a tournament at the beginning of the PPTQ system, and I'm now out of practice for a while unless I play GPTs um, because I can't play any more PPTQs. Well, now I can't play GPTs because those are also gone. Yeah. Uh, those Yay. are now yeah. those are now <laughs> only Friday nights before the GP that you're playing. You can try to win buys. Because they didn't have attendance, players didn't care about it, stores kept running them, there were stores that were running them instead of PPTQs, which was driving players nuts, yep. um, and so they just got rid of the GPTs, which was fine, because it's just, they, most yeah. people didn't, if you wanted to play a GPT normally, you weren't playing for these buys, you just wanted to play Magic that day. Yeah. So now the store can run whatever tournament, 
is convenient to them, whatever format is convenient to them and their player base wants, and do a prize support that they feel they can sustain, as opposed to doing these GPTs and saying, well, Wizards says the GPT needs to be this format, so we can't play our legacy GPT. Like, they just got rid of all these restrictions, and so now players who want to play a tournament, go to your store and say, hey, I just want a tournament on this Saturday that's open, and they can play whatever tournament that, that like they feel like planning. Yeah. Um, as opposed to fitting it in this box. Yeah. My favorite thing about the GPTs was the moment whenever people made top eight, and you're like, "All right, who's actually going to this?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had before I had my two buys. There was one year I had like one buy, and so I played a GPT, and uh, I got to the finals against a guy, and we were both saying we were going to go to this GP, and I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm going to go. I would really like the buys. I don't care about the price support. Uh, do you want to do it? Like, are you going to the GP? Do you want to do a chop?" Um, and so he's like, no, no, no I'm gonna go to the GPT the, to the GP. And so we ended up playing, and I ended up getting beat. And the dude no showed to the GP. And I'm like, <laughs> so bitter. I'm like, why? <laughs> what on earth? He like, he's a guy like I had known from a shop. And I was never a huge fan, but he was just like, yeah, I just do feel like going. I'm like, then why did you concede? Like, what are you doing? Dude, come on. It was like right before the GP too. So it wasn't like. Oh, you know, way later, I forgot. I didn't feel like going. Yeah. He could have. The oh, weekend before, essentially, yeah. 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 <laughs> I had a funny situation similar to that. I uh, I was in the finals of a GPT, and same, same deal. And I ended up uh, making plans to stay with the guy who was also in the finals with me <laughs> at that GP. <laughs> so... <laughs> we're like, okay, yeah, Whoops. we're gonna hold each other accountable for this. And then just so go. has it, I had an exam the Friday before the GP and couldn't make it. So, oh, did you great. win? Did you yes, take the bias? I did. <laughs> so you're that I felt, guy. I felt bad. <laughs> I felt real bad. I messaged him on Facebook. I was like, dude, I have, I have some bad news. Then I have some worse news. <laughs> oh, you're the embodiment of frustration. Way to go. Hey, <laughs> I, I had every intention of going though. Yeah. The best so, intentions best are or otherwise. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the thing that's going to be interesting with these PTQs is I haven't seen actual prize support yet um, or the traditional yeah. entry fee. Uh, Steven knows about what it's going to cost for. Um, I'm curious what, what Pittsburgh's entry fee is because it starts this weekend at Pittsburgh. Um, but as long as they don't make it a price gouge, like as long as they don't turn this into it's just like another $60, $80, $90 tournament, yeah. uh, that would make me really sad. Like you, I know you need to pay this plane ticket, you're probably gonna get that 225 player cap because a lot of people there are trying to get to the pro tour, and this is a big mm-hmm. this is a big tournament for them. Even casuals gonna be like, "Hey, I'll, I'll throw this money down." Like people who are local, and they're just that's just like the one tournament that rolls through. They'll throw it down for a second day of a tournament and a chance to go to get a plane ticket for a pro oh, tour. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm just hoping it's not too big of a price gouge. But I I I'm all for trying to increase the the value of the game by doing these cool national things. And very much in, and for them giving us another option to get to the Pro Tour for the people who are getting really burnt out on PPTQs. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one thing that, that, that just dawned on me is that, you know, when they inter- instituted the, the WMCQ program was you got these cool promos. They had the Thalias, the Abrupt Decays, and whatever else they were giving out. I would wonder, are they also going to give out promos at the Nationals tournaments now? Probably not. Oh, there you go. It's well, Wizards. I mean, they, they, they love will. to give a promo to get you to show up and then, like, take that away. And then do, they're like, oh, you want to do this thing? Well, here's this cool thing. And then take <laughs> that away. That's that's Wizards' motif. Give and take. Um, there you go. They never, it'll it's be never, Twin. Yeah, it's never give, take, give. <laughs> it's always give, take, and it ends on take, and they keep it. They keep it down inside. Like, they don't want to share. In the interest of our pocketbooks, promos <laughs> have been banned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that would suck. I they don't even make any money off that. They just yeah, that's, they would that's, just be doing true, that to yeah. troll us. They would just be like, yeah, yeah. guys, uh, yeah, promos. Like I'm waiting for the day that like it's ninety dollars to play a GP. It's an extra twenty dollars for the play mat. It's an extra twenty five dollars for the promo. It's an extra that? like it's an extra seventy five cents for a life pad, and then it's an extra <laughs> like you can pay ten dollars for your chair. You can pay fifty dollars <laughs> for a chair with a cushion. And you can play sixty dollars for a chair with a cushion and armrests. Hey, like I'm waiting. It's just I, I don't really want like armrests. It. Why would you want armrests when you're playing Magic? That just gets in the way. Oh, I like chairs that spin. I would pay an I'll pay an upcharge for chairs that spin. That's fine. I'd do that too, but not not armrests though. There's, there's a store locally called Gen X, and every time I play it, I look like I'm just like a three year old child because I'm just like yeah, I'm just like spinning <laughs> around in the chair, middle of the matches all the time. I mean, your opponents get, get bored against you playing Lancer Control. You're just like. Millet, millet, millet. You gotta have some fun with that. 
I'm just trying to get him, trying to give him vertigo. Like, hey, <laughs> let's just spin around until you pass out. Right. Yeah, I, I will say like I can't, I can't see any negative. And we talked about the day when this article got posted. There's literally zero negative to this change. I think. Yeah. Um, oh, even if they make it you want to hear expensive. what Reddit figured it out? Reddit oh, figured okay. out the negative. Okay, what did Reddit oh, say? It was there. There are one to two less modern events a year because the WMCQs got taken out. Wow. Like, this, that was the point we were talking about, and, and that was something that we kind of touched on in, in our chat today, Sean. Um, you mentioned that, you know, sit, Modern needs to kind of go away from the limelight for about six months and kind of figure itself out. Um, I, I don't even think that even the WotC team is all that good at covering Modern events. Like, they're no, much they, more comfortable playing, covering Standard. Like, let Modern just kind of be its own thing for a while and just kind of figure itself out you know it's a it's a big card pool people are doing crazy things you can't expect these people who's who don't really competitively play because they're so busy working on coverage like they get they don't actually competitively play very often to be aware of everything going on yeah um and think about the last time there was a modern format that everybody collectively said like this is healthy there's yeah. been just the last couple of years have been just like ban this deck, ban this deck, ban this deck because it's too broken. This is too broken. This is too broken. Everything's breaking the turn four rule and like everything's just been everything's burning down. Yeah. Um, and so like I, I think I would love to see. I hope I my hope and my guess is that like they're making this decision of moving away from modern because modern's been so unhealthy and people have been complaining about it so much. There's been so much acid in the player base about the controversy of how broken some modern decks are. Mm -hmm. um, that's and always going to be around, though. That's always going to be around, yeah. but I think if, if we can get our format a little more healthy, like right now it's actually not looking terrible. If that format can be a little bit more healthy, um, have a little bit more diversity as far as what the decks are trying to do, then they might move back into a little bit more coverage. Um, yeah. But currently it's just not a fun format to watch for a lot of players who will be because like at first you're like I watched this broken deck it looked hilarious until you go play your F and M or your tournament and that broken deck crushes you yeah. and they're like why did they print this this is stupid and you it get turned to Gory of Vengeance or you get turned to by Infects like I, right. I, I firmly believe that we are literally this close and if you're not watching this on the on YouTube I'm holding my fingers very very close together to show just how close the modern format is to being perfect and I think with the new banning strategy of things happening twice. You know, once before the set release, before the Pro Tour, and five weeks after the Pro Tour, that's going to give them a little bit more way to kind of wiggle back and forth and kind of say, all right, for the next five weeks, we're going to do something really stupid, possibly, and unban Jason Mind Sculptor. Everyone's going to go nuts, and then five weeks after the PT is over, like, okay, guys, sorry, we didn't mean to do that. It's well, you just have to, like, do a we disclaimer were. be like, hey, look, yeah, this has do. been on the watch list. Don't like buy into the hype, please. Yeah. You know, word that however they need to, and yeah, be like, it could need. just be banned later on. Just say, Constantly working to keep it healthy idea. is gonna be sweet. I think. I think our next step is if the format gets broken again, like another broken deck shows up that's consistently broken. Our next step is the new rule in, in modern is you're not allowed to win before turn four. Any damage that would kill your opponent before turn four reduces <laughs> them to one. And Infect reduces them to nine poison counters. You can't <laughs> kill them before turn four. And like whatever it is, it just you just hit a brick wall, and then on turn four, you could just bolt them and finish. That's the next <laughs> rule. Because Wizards be like, we don't know what bolts, else to do. Do bolts gain like one Infect? Staring at each other like, or one I'm poison. Bolts. I just want to kill you so bad, but I can't. Everybody has a constant friction on life. Like it's just always <laughs> going. I, I would I would play in tournaments that had like restrictive rules like that, like you know actual like conditional rules you have to play you adhere to. Like you can only have five lands in play, or you can only have one creature in play at the same time. Like it's like a one on one duel. Like let's that might be kind of dumb, but whatever. But it is a one on one. You duel. can't cast oh, any dude. card that makes your opponent roll their eyes because that's too unfair. <laughs> oh, dude, that's let every me tell single you. Single card that we play though. Let me. Here's a list. Thought I play four. In Snaring Bridge, Snapcaster Mage. Mana Leak, uh, Steven, Time Warp, um, Walk the Aeons. These are all cards that just make it kind of go, really? really? I've had a lot yeah, of people two roll their eyes there. at Ghoul Cards, Bell. Yeah. I've had a lot of eye rolls at Ghoul Cards, Bell. No, My favorite no, thing no. is exactly. when you play Lantern and they don't know what you're doing, and so you play these little piddly artifacts, and your opponent's just kind of like, oh, what's up, kitchen table player? Welcome to the tournament. I'm going to run you over. They're like, that's real cool what you're doing. You're milling at one. And then you play a bridge, and that's when they kind of start slowly going, Oh man, like it's it's no longer effect. But when before Lantern got really big, it was really fun playing against people who had no idea what they were doing because so many players went from so friendly to just literally hating your guts. Yep. 
I yeah. think the best eye rolls are the mold of six scry top ghoul colors ballot into the graveyard. <sighs> like that gets the best ones, but for me personally, the one that I just get infuriated about is um uh the Eldrazi taxes and they go like violin Leonin Arbiter, like Ghost Quarter, Ghost Quarter or something, and you're just like, yeah. Okay. Strip mines and modern guys. This oh, is yeah. this is fun. I played that deck for a little while. It's not nearly consistent enough for me, but it it does some stupid things. I also I love I love Tron players because Tron players are their goal is to be really broken. Like I'm gonna play Karns on turn three. So whenever you play a lantern and you like turn one Codex Shredder targeting you before they even draw a card, and they flip a, a like a Tron land and you have a surgical <laughs> extraction and you're like your knuckles are about to get real white, friend. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, since we're feeling. talking about the modern meta game, you know, all, all the GP you know changes aside, you know, the, PP, the PTQ changes are great. I know that my phone has been trying to autocorrect PTQ to PPTQ all day, and hopefully this change will change that back on my phone. Um, like, slow down, youngin. This is this is real. We're deleting a P. Yeah, ex exactly. So, modern meta game. So the last week, over the last weekend, you know, if you're one of the pro tour, you're probably at regionals. Regionals is here in Florida. It's back in Texas. It's in like probably ten different places across the country. And with the banning of Golgari Grave Troll and Gataxian Probe, like we said, Modern's in a pretty good place. So Stephen, I know you got an article pulled up from Star City Games. I think it was Todd Stevens that wrote it. That really breaks down um, the top, the number of top eight decks and their number of appearances and also the number of first place finishes and it does a pretty good job of kind of breaking down the metagame so what does modern look like right now well yeah uh todd stevens is a pretty good job you know just combining all the data but i think you can also look at the mtg goldfish uh which basically just uh hijacks oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the info from uh wizards and <laughs> all the competitive it. league that's all it's like well i mean hijack information it, sorry it doesn't hijack it it c correlates it all in one place uh, and it makes it really so convenient nice. to go uh look at all the different decks but between um uh, between Todd Stevens' article and then like the data on the competitive leagues, it's pretty clear that like Affinity is like very high on top, mm -hmm. uh, followed by uh, Burn and Jund. Uh, well, Jund or Junk, I should say, because Junk's been doing a lot better online than it ended up doing uh, in paper, it seems. Mm -hmm. But that's probably just uh, due to you know like player preference online and the skill online. I think is typically going to be a little bit higher. Uh, so. You know, I could see junk just overstepping the Jun decks that are also oh, yeah. heavily prevalent online. Anyway, um, so you had uh, the best place uh, or the first place deck according to like this spreadsheet in regionals. You have Burn, which uh, had nine uh, top eight appearances between the Opens and the regionals, and it had three first place finishes, which uh, I think is pretty you know telling of a new format. Just like, oh well, what am I going to do at the very start? Uh, I don't care. Let's just punish everyone for trying to do what they want to do. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a pretty good place to go. And if it's not that, then it's like, all right, let's just beat people down with robots and Yep. Aside from that, like the combo decks are still doing pretty well. Um Gorio's Vengeance and Ad Nauseam have kind of taken the place of Infect and Dredge. Um both of those decks, you know, can have really explosive starts. Uh they were, you know, a little bit slower than the others, just be well, maybe not Gorio's Vengeance, but anyway, they're like a on average, like a turn behind. Yeah. So it's cool to see, you know, the combos just shift to something else, and even just Kai Sahili breaking into, into modern is pretty pretty interesting. It's like ah, they take away twin. Well, let's let's play a cat. <laughs> well, what's better? I think we talked touched on this last episode. Do you want this spear wielding little blue cleric guy poking you a million times, or do you want a bunch of little cats just kind of? Yeah, uh, that that's fair. Which which one do you want more? Hairballs or spears? I I I don't know. I just say tap your team with cryptic command and I move on. So Ah, see that's the correct answer. That is the yeah. correct answer. We can all get behind cryptic command. Yeah. So yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty interesting modern. I think modern's in a pretty good place right now. Like there's yeah. a good bit of diversity and there's not like one deck that's just like standing out on top, kind of like how Infect did for a bit there, but Yeah. I think it'll be it'll be fun moving forward. Yeah, Infect still managed to make a top eight appearance at regionals, which I just, mm -hmm. oh yeah, because Infect's going to infect. There's no dredge, which is nice to see. Um, I definitely like that. 
Um, my kind of thought was the fact that without with Dredge kind of moving away and um, the Taxium Probe kind of crippling these um, super aggressive aggro decks like Death Shadows Aggro, um, Blue Red Kiln Fiend, and, and in fact, you could probably start to move away from your Graveyard Hate, and then Glorious Vengeance shows up and says, nah, you guys probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah there's enough... <laughs> There's enough. There's enough graveyard. Graveyard is one of the most dangerous things. You can never fully move away. You can shave from your four to six, but you can't yeah. fully move away. Yeah, Absent Company yeah. is starting to get back on top as well. Another graveyard deck you need to be accept, expecting. So keep your scavenging users in your deck. You rest in peace. So yeah. I, I had I had a moment in a GPT I played against. I was playing um, Bantal Drazi, and my opponent was on Blue Red Storm, and he um, he peeks. At my hand, turn one. I'm like, okay, cool. And I showed him Graphicer's Cage and Rest in Peace. And he just kind of looked at it and went, uh, can I have one of those? I said, no, you can't. He's like, okay. And eventually I just got to the point where I had them both in play at the same time. And I was like, all right, little, uh, little noble hierarch, it is your time to beat him down ever so slowly. <laughs> Sounds like somebody overboarded if we're beating down with noble hierarch. I, I brought in three cards. I brought in the two. Who needs threats? Yeah, I brought in two rest in peace and two grab triggers cage. That's all I brought in. I was like, I just drew it. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, it just happened. I mean, to be yeah. fair, like, Brawl can get there over 20 turns. Yeah. Like, I mean, it might help Brawl if all 20 turns too. are, like, simultaneous, or, you know, like, back to back, but, you know. Yeah. I, I kind of wish that Brawl had prowess. I oh, think no. Kinda... oh no! Oh no! He'd be way too good. You can't put a, you. a cost reducer on a prowess, dude. That would be stupid. <laughs> Come on! Yeah, what? There was like a custom uh, magic uh, card that someone had made, and it was like double red, double strike prowess. Like even that's <laughs> too good. Well, uh, I, yeah, Stephen, I seem to remember that you created a card that you wanted to make a card a couple weeks ago. That was a single blue, and it said either draw a card or spell pierce. If I'm oh, not no, no, no. It was loot oh. or spell pierce. Oh, that's Because right. that's what that's Brawl right. does. That's right. Modern. That's right. It's fantastic. <laughs> Except instead of or, it's and. It's just and. It's so great. Oh, so it loots and spell pierces? Yes. It's, what oh. the hell? That's what, that's no. what, Manalik, that's what Manalik does. It's great. It doesn't loot and spell pierce. It's the combination. It plus other cards. Oh, yes. A yes. card that did both would be stupid. That would be my I just want to make sure our listeners ever. understand. Don't write in about this card being made at Wizards. They're going to ignore you. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think Aura would be an interesting uh, situation. Like, maybe it's like... Uh, what if it was just like cycling two? Like a spell pierce that had cycling two. It would need to cost more than one mana. You can't just strictly make spell pierce better and yeah, give that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's the, the problem. Yeah. yeah, if it's like a two mana spell pierce that you could cycle for two, or like a three mana, like I guess two, three would be unplayable. Yeah, two mana maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Make that's it, still really good. Make it blue, blue, or blue, red, or something. Yeah, let's. Th there's a reason we don't design magic cards, guys. Is because what we do is are. They're if, fun if, things. They're just not fair things. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We, we could probably ponder on this for a pretty good long time. Um, I can't no, see that's, that's a yeah. fair card in any in any way, shape, no, or form. Unless like, it only counters like only instants, spell pierce an instant or cycle. Yeah, this sounds like the R and D meetings from like the very beginnings of Magic. Where they're looking at like the boon cycle, and they're like, okay, so giant growth is a card plus three plus three. That's pretty cool. Uh, lightning bolts three damage. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, healing yourself three life. That's pretty cool. Black, yeah, three mana, that seems fine. What, what are we getting blue do? That draws cards, so draw three cards and some speed? Seems fine. <laughs> and bolts are being played more than recalls. But that That's very true, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Oh, God. <laughs> How many times can we make Sean eye roll? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you set yourself up for this. I earlier. wish I had like a counter up here on the top of the screen that could just like tick over every single time it was like tracking Sean's eyes. It, yeah, it'd just just get the nice triple digits by now. Just like get the nice little ding from Cinema Sins. I get so <laughs> much. That way, that way he knows. I get so much good sleep after after a podcast because my eyes are so tired, <laughs> so tired. We need to do, we need to do a Patreon account where every time I roll my eyes, you donate a penny, and we'll be rich, just rich. What are we gonna spend you're going to pay on? for my like, you're going to pay for my doctor visits. Oh, <laughs> that's not how Patreon works. <laughs> I don't know. Usually they get. I don't. Out uh, I don't run this thing. I just show up and <laughs> within a reasonably late time manner. Sean is not uh, 
represent the uh, common interest of the EAT News Flash, if you're wondering. So I never represent common interest of anybody. I got one person that matters <laughs> in this situation. I want to remember all Uno. Okay, I have two people that matter in this situation. <laughs> All right, before this uh, this renegade freighter completely goes renegade, <laughs> I think that about wraps it up for the tonight. Um, if you are playing in... Um, fun, fun fact, I might just be at the SCG Open in, da in Dallas DFW come March. I'm going to be in town for work events. I'm going to try and swing it so I can play the Modern, modern Open or at least do some side events or something. I'm going to be in Texas soon. And I'm looking forward to it. So we're gonna party. So we're gonna get the band back together. It's gonna be awesome. Might do a might do an might do an episode at the open. I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, with the, your conveniently placed media badge sitting back there that you never turned in. <laughs> so I, I honestly forgot it was there. I had it under my shirt, and we left for dinner. We went to uh, BJ's. It was great. And I was like scratching on my neck, and I was like, "Oh, why is this O oh, still on my neck?" And I just never turned it back in. So you're so, you're a thief. I, I am a thief. Yeah, no. You'll send in the email for this open and be like, hey, so I'd be interested if I could... No. <laughs> in fact, we, we've sent a lawsuit because that class <laughs> oh, is great. expensive. I'm just going to waltz them with the thing around my neck and just be like, okay, this guy's been part of the media. You don't even actually need it. It was more just me being nice about it. I just wanted them to let them know that I was going to be there doing something. Because you sign up... No, but it's you, like... You, what they don't say is Alex made this like, badge. <laughs> like, they, they didn't tell him it was okay. He's just like, I went to FedEx and I made this media badge and it's so exciting. It's going to be huge. It's going to be something it's huge. Cedric, get out of the way. Here comes Lynch. <laughs> I would love to do coverage. He was a, I interviewed him at the last open that one of the opens I was at, and he's a really nice guy. Him and Thompson, super nice guys. I, I that was that's one thing that like I would always love to like do some streams online and, and do podcasts and petition to get to get on coverage sometime. But it would take like a small amount of research to realize how negative I've been, yeah. and I don't think I. I think I've already dug that hole, so I'm going to just keep taking this negative train because it's the only way I'm getting anywhere. Yeah, it's worked so far. We've, it makes we've for, gone it makes, too far off. It there. makes for great listening and great watching. I, I do think that Wizards is actually I, – I read this somewhere, and I cannot find the links to it. Um, but Evan Irwin and his show, Magic Mike's two weeks ago, talked about this. But it looks like Wizards is actually reaching out to people who do online content like this, you know, the more you know, prevalent ones, and asking them to come do coverage for their teams, which is kind of cool, I think. So – that's a really Wizards. sweet. Uh, We're here. Idea. I've been wondering how long it was going to take. Like, it, it, they have so many streamers that have yep. really good, co good, mm -hmm. good content, um, and they have a lot of like podcasters and article writers. Like, there's a there's a lot, bunch of content there that would gladly do it. You don't need to get somebody who's not familiar with the game that has yeah. a journalism degree. Like, there's a lot of people who just have that skill. Yeah, um, as as and I. I've done journalism and radio for like four years, so you know if Wizards wants to, okay. you know, I've got some experience. As long as you got the online persona or the visual person, like the the you know on camera persona, and you have some energy, I we'd be great at that, I think. So yeah, I mean, call us, hazards. We're listening. We're waiting. Oh, uh -huh. look at this right here. It's perfect. It, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll transition from once a month haircut to a weekly haircut if I'm getting paged to talk about magic on a camera all day. Now we're talking. Yeah. You I'll you are you are getting paged weekly to talk about magic. <laughs> Sean, cut your hair for next week. <laughs> <laughs> it is due. It is due. Yeah, mine's getting there too. But anyway, before we get on, on on that train, I think about wraps it up. If you are if you're playing a modern event this weekend, listen to this and get our insight on the modern meta game. Let us know what you think about standard. Is it you know really a three trick pony race, or is something going to come out of the woodwork and break the whole thing? Are you excited about the PTQ returns? You know, are you sad that GPTs are going away? Let us know in the comments over on YouTube. Find us on Facebook at EOT Newsflash. Find us on Twitter at EOT Newsflash. Send all your love, hate, and respect to EOT Newsflash at gmail.com. And Stephen, what are we going to do next week? We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good night.